Hi, good day everyone. So as you can see, the setup is a little different. I wanted to kind of show my face. I know I used to do videos. I've gotten a lot of people that have reached out saying, hey, continue on sharing your journey and sharing your videos about your journey. And I kind of retracted, well, retracted, retreated from doing that <laughs> rather. Um, just because I have some personal things going on and um, I, I couldn't really share everything right because of that. So um, that's why I kind of stopped doing that. But I just wanted to kind of touch base with kind of where I'm at in my healing journey um, since I started in, what, 2017. Okay, it's 2022. So 2017, I started my journey and then um, I took a break in 2019. Up until I took a break 2019 until actually until I started uploading on my channel again. So when you see that like break, um, that's why. So <clears throat> what I'm focusing on now in my life personally, um, I finally have gotten to the point where I'm over a lot of my um, trauma in regards to my, my childhood, um, picking different, like picking the wrong partner, like picking narcissistic people, um, or rather than gravitating towards me, finally understanding what I was doing, um, how I was in a low vibrational state when I was attracting these people, what was attracted about these people from me, and finally healing and learning that, you know what, that's not really what I want. Um, finally coming to a place of, um, you know, really incorporating integrity, morals, ethics, values, um, really walking the walk is, you know, how I raise my children, <laughs> really walking that walk instead of just talking the talk. Right. Because a lot of times we as parents will say, oh, well, do as I say, but not as I do. And kids are like. Right. So um, I it's taken me a long time to post this because I honestly didn't know what I was going to say. Um, so I'm totally winging it. And I was I had my makeup done. and I was dressed nice because my daughter had a graduation today. Um, kindergarten. So I was like, all right. I look decent, so I'm not in PJs, so let's do a video. <laughs> and, of course, that's Blade on my bed. Um, anyways, but, yeah, you guys. So, what have I, where have I gone? What have I figured out in my life? Okay, I figured out that the reason why I was attracting low vibrational people and it was women too. I'm pansexual, so you know, I'm attracted to anybody. <laughs> right? I have a sexual attraction to, you know, anybody. I, I'm really I feel like I'm attracted to energy because, you know, a lot of times I have dated people that weren't the best looking. And people are like, you know, what did you see in that person? I've had friends, right, say, and I'm like, Well, they were this, they were that. It's not about the looks, right? It's about personality, energy, and that kind of made me have to take a step back when I realized who I was attracting, because I was like, if I'm attracted to their energy, why am I attracted to toxicity? Why is that attractive to me? Well, I grew up in a very tumultuous environment. I grew up in chaos. I was born into chaos is what I like to say. My brother does too, which is an honest synopsis, okay, of that. 
Um, when I mean chaos, I mean like when I was born. I don't want to get into too much detail because I know my mother watches this. <laughs> but um, there were some things that I was told and that I knew that she probably wouldn't be proud of today. Um, and I had to deal with that, right, in my own way. Um, and to respect her privacy, right, I am not going to say those things, but um, she's not the same person she was either. Uh, she has healed, and um, she is a former drug addict who also battled with mental illness. So um, she's overcame a lot, right? She has her has had her own struggles to deal with. So I had to kind of work out within me why she made the decisions that she had done and why I was put into situations that I was put into, right? Because when we're not healthy, we can't be healthy parents. Um, so, you know, I had to really work on forgiveness. That was where I started, to be honest. I The first thing I started doing was listening to my intuition. But when healing began, it was it began with forgiveness. It began with everyone who had hurt me, everyone who had, even if they didn't realize they had hurt me, intentionally or unintentionally. Um, then I had to kind of figure out why I kept attracting these toxic men. Well, it was because my whole life I was, the way that I was nurtured and the way that I was cared for was in a toxic manner. So to me, men who were toxic, right, who are toxic, who had similar traits as my father. I can speak a little bit more about him because he's deceased. <laughs> you know, I mean, I love him, but he is deceased. Um, so he wouldn't obviously wouldn't really give too much thought about what I'm saying. But um, he was very violent and did things. Um, he was very gifted also. He was, um, you know, his father was a Mason and um, a Freemason. And um, his father was rebellious. So I've seen and heard about. And um, his father was also an alcoholic. And so that kind of trickled down to my father, right? And my father, um, he was... My grandfather was English as well. So, you know, if anyone who's English here, right, who watches me, you know. <laughs> um, people, English people drink a lot, right? Even Irish people drink a lot. That's even, I had an, an Irish priest when I was growing up, Catholic. Um, he drank, and it was nothing. You didn't think about it, anything about it, right? It wasn't abnormal. Um, it's like a cultural thing. So... Um, a lot of British men are also violent. I don't want to stereotype, but it, it's just a thing. I mean, so that's the kind of tumultuous environment that my, my dad was raised in, right? Alcoholic, violent. Um, and so obviously he was violent. I, I was never abused by my father in any way. I was actually the opposite. Um, he sheltered me. Um, he treated me like I was a princess. And he raised me very um, gender specific, gender role. You know, he was a very chauvinistic man. Um, I remember my father used to hunt all the time. And I remember wanting to go hunting with him. And he would tell me, no, girls don't hunt. So, you know, remember when I told you about <laughs> I have a tendency to get into a very masculine energy? Yeah, I was a tomboy, you know, when I was a, a little girl. I, I was like the little girl who wore the dresses but wanted to dig in the dirt, right? That wanted to jump jump on the bicycle with the with the poofy dress on and the tiara. That was the kind of girl I was, right? I looked like a girl, but I wanted to do the boy stuff. So he never allowed me. That was not something that I was allowed to do. I was, you know, you do what girls are supposed to do. Like, you go shopping and <laughs> you spend money. You don't <laughs> go hunting, okay? So, um, and my father was abusive to my mother, okay? Um, and that was something I witnessed. I still remember things 
from a young age. And they never married, they never, um, they weren't together very long, but those are things that as a child, as a little girl, you grow up and you think, oh, okay, so this is how a man is supposed to be. He's supposed to be violent, chauvinistic, sheltering, controlling, possessive. You see where I'm going? So as an adult or even a teenager, my first abusive relationship was when I was 16, okay? Um, as, an, as a teen, as a young adult, what kind of man do you think I'm going to choose? You got it. Just like my dad, right? Just like dad. So that's what I did. Um, and it took me a long time to understand that those men weren't good for me, right? Because I should have, if I had more self-awareness, I would have realized, you know, like, was he good to my mother? No, he wasn't. He was not good to my mother. He was good to me, but that was because I was his daughter, <laughs> right? I was an extension of him. So he loved me in however way that he could love me is how he loved me, right? So that's what it was. Now, obviously, we don't have that enough of self-awareness about that when we're young adults. We don't know that. We don't know that you know what, I got some, some stuff to heal. I have some things to figure out because that's not normal behavior, but it wasn't. So you get with people who are just like them. So that took a lot of understanding on my part and figuring out, like, this is toxic, right? An actual, um, you know, a man who is healthy and who is secure in his masculinity and who is not coming from a damaged place is not going to be possessive, be controlling. They may be a little bit jealous because that's human, that's normal human behavior, but all of those other things, obsessive, stalking, stalking behavior, that is all not appropriate, right? That is all not healthy. That is all toxic, okay? And there could be some women who have that same tendencies, right? And I'm not saying these people can't heal, but I'm saying they are toxic and they have some work to do too, right? They have something from their childhood or their upbringing that they need to work on, right? They could have father issues or mother issues or both, right? So that was just things that I had realized, um, I actually view, you know, and, and I feel like a lot of us can relate because a lot of women are like, well, I wanted the bad boy. We, we gravitated towards the bad boy because we had father issues, right? I mean, you guys know that already. <laughs> so it's like, mm, right? I mean, there's even chauvinistic men out there, you know, who do these, because I'm on TikTok now, and some of these TikToks are disgusting and vile, to be honest. And they do, oh, give me the woman. I want the woman with the daddy issues. That's vile, okay? We all know what they're saying. We all know what they're implying. We all, we get it, okay? You're the one to steer clear from, right? <laughs> so, um, so, or you could be, you know, when I was being toxic and I was not having integrity, I would see men like that and I would be like, mm, that's a challenge. Okay. You think you think you want me? Okay. Let's let's go. Let's do it. And it would be a completely sh a complete shit show of a relationship. It would be toxic, vile, and horrible. But that was because I was low vibrational and I was coming from a wounded feminine energy, right? Just as they were coming from a wounded masculine energy. And that's why we vibrated on the same level, right? We vibrated on the same frequency. We matched, we got along, we had fun. And then until we didn't, right? <laughs> until we didn't. <laughs> um, so as I begin to heal and recognize these things and say, you know what? Oh, I had some stuff to work on, right? I had a lot of those tendencies myself. I was you know, uh, have anger issues and I uh, am controlling and possessive and all of these things, right? Like 
I can admit that I was. And that's coming from an insecure place. Um, and, excuse me, and for many years of my life, I was very vain and I was very much in my ego. And I used that to get what I want, right? To be honest, that's honestly what I did. And um, I started to realize as I kept going on my journey, like, this is very low vibrational. This is not, do I want my children to act like this? Do I want, no, this is not who I want to be. I want to be a better person. I want to be an evolved person. I want to be, you know, someone who is on the right path. I'm tired of ego. Ego has led me to a path of destruction. Ego has led me to depression. Ego has led me to drinking, partying, um, you know, doing things that are, I don't want to say out of character because it's a different character, right? The person you are is a person, the person that you are at a young age is the person that you have created from trauma, right? So it's not out of character because it fits perfectly well with that character, but your actions are not coming from a healed place. So the person that you will evolve into will be a different person and that's not going to be the same character. So that's why I don't want to do, say that. Um, the person that I was, the, the actions that I was doing and the person that I was acting like or behaving was the character, the, tra the traumatic person, right? I am now a more evolved spiritual person who has integrity, ethics, morals, and everything like that because I have learned lessons. I have healed. I have understood, taken a microscope inside and looked and said, you know what? These are the things that I buried. These are the things that I didn't want to see. These are the things that I didn't want to talk about, that I didn't want to... Um, acknowledge that I didn't want to admit to myself, right? Because I was ashamed, because I was, um, I felt bad. So, like, why did I put up with certain things from different people, right? Like, a lot of our experiences, we blame ourselves. I mean, technically, it's it's not our fault, though. It's because we're coming from a negative place. We're coming from, again, a trauma place, right? A traumatic place. So anyways, where I'm at now is I am in a place of kind of acknowledging my own faults, acknowledging more so how I um, bring a lot of my shadow aspects into a relationship and just make excuses instead of actually trying to change them, okay? Like, you know, needing validation from my partner. That is a big one that I'm trying to work on right now. Needing validation. Well, when someone needs validation, it's because they're insecure. I am. And I'm the first to admit it. I am. Um, and, you know, so one thing I wanted to do for myself this year, and you guys know I talk about self-care all the time. One thing I wanted to do for myself was lose weight. I was never a big girl when I was younger. I was never a big child. I was always super skinny. Um, I even, I was even hospitalized with an eating disorder when I was 13. Okay. For being, obviously I had anorexia. Um, and so that was now being in 36 and being overweight, it's weird, right? But I feel like that's something that I'm having to heal too, because when you go from having an eating disorder to just completely not caring about what you eat, it's still a disorder with eating. It's an eating disorder, right? It's just the opposite end of the spectrum. Um, so that's something that I'm healing and working on, right? So something I started doing for myself this January was I signed up for Weight Watchers. That is something that has helped me I absolutely adore their program. Um, I don't go to meetings or anything because you guys know I'm not very social in that regard. Um, it's I've always been kind of really antisocial unless I was drunk <laughs> because crowds and things like that and being vulnerable is not 
something I'm comfortable with doing because going to a Weight Watchers meeting is pretty vulnerable, right? <laughs> Let's face it. So I didn't sign up for the full program. I just signed up for the app. So I track my calories and all of that type of stuff. And I have lost almost 40 pounds. And I am proud of myself. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to keep going until I get to the weight that I desire. Um, and I think eventually uh, my husband said I need to join a yoga class or something like that for social interaction. Um, because there's only a few people I talk to in person. Um, <laughs> in person. <laughs> and, um, he thinks I need more social interaction and I probably do because, okay, what, right? What's the saying? If you want to grow, you have to get out of your comfort zone. I even know this. Yes. <laughs> I have to get out of my comfort zone. But it's very hard being a spiritual person, let alone a tarot reader. People either look at you like you need an exorcism or they look at you like you're just full of shit. And I'm like, or you will find someone who is, you know, the same, but that doesn't really happen to me. The universe likes to trigger me and put me <laughs> in situations that don't align. <laughs> I, I feel like they don't align. Okay. And I'm like, really? Why? Why am I here? Why? And sometimes I feel like my guardian angels are just like laughing and like, you know, too, yeah. And like smoking their cigarettes and drinking their vodka <laughs> and like having a party while I'm, you know, uncomfortable. And I'm like, what is this? Why can't I just find a nice friend? Right. It's very hard for me to find a nice friend um, in person <laughs> that that doesn't try to, you know, preach to me or um, or they're totally do into stuff that I'm just not into. Okay. Like weird stuff like swingers or something like that. <laughs> and I'm not exaggerating. Like th these, what I'm telling you situations, these situations have actually happened. And I just kind of like, this is why I come home and I'm like, this is why I don't have friends. <laughs> so I can never, I feel like I can never connect with people like I do online, like people that come to me with readings and st or for readings and stuff like that, we connect, but I can never meet similar people in person. So a lot of times I'm just left feeling like I'm just, maybe it's not on my path <laughs> to meet anybody um, <laughs> in person, right? So I don't know. Eventually I'll do something and try to get out and mingle, I don't know, and meet people. But so that's kind of where I am, losing weight, trying to, you know, work on my insecurities. And I know a lot of my insecurities is not just weight, right? But it is part of it. When you look at yourself and you don't like the way that you look, it can really, um, you know, it does damage your self-esteem, right? And um, I can tell that my self-esteem has gone up since I've been able to, you know, bite the uh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> smaller clothes. And um, so now I need to work on, you know, my self-worth. I feel like I have a very low self-worth. Um, and I really need to work on changing that, right? Like, why don't I have that? Why don't I see value in myself, right? And I used to not be able to talk about this without busting into tears and like, crying all over the place like oh my god I have no value like you know like I now I can talk about it and be like you know that is how I feel so I know that I'm healing it and I'm fixing it but I'm still not 100% there and I know that in and it comes out in the form of trust right I have big trust issues and that has a lot to do with my self-worth I have I, I need to work on that right because I feel like you know well, I'm not enough, so I am not able to fully provide uh, or fulfill someone, right? Well, I even caught myself just saying that. Technically, I'm not supposed to fulfill someone. They're supposed to be fulfilled on their own. 
here I am again, though. That's the empath in me trying to fulfill someone. I got to write that down in my journal. <laughs> and I do journal, and I everything I tell you guys, I do it. I do. So, because I have epiphanies all the time, and I forget them most of the time, so I write them down. Um, and... For some reason, when it comes to spirituality and reading and all this kind of stuff, I forget. But other times I have a brilliant memory. Um, but yeah, so that those are the things that I'm kind of working on right now and transmuting those feelings now, right? I, I feel like I've gotten through the mud, right? I feel like I've gotten through the thick of it, but I'm still, now I'm like kind of swimming, right? Or before I was like, Oh my God. I'm, oh my God, like really trying to get through it like quicksand. Now I'm kind of like, okay, I found the river and I'm swimming now, right? So I definitely can say that I'm through the thick of it for the most part. Um, my, my journey now has been tough, but not as tough as it used to be. The healing is not as difficult. Um, and I think that's because, you know, it's just part of your journey. You, you, it's easy to see things come more when you're, when you've healed a lot, right? So, and that's another thing I like to tell you guys, like, I'm not 100% healed. I don't think I ever will be. I don't know. Maybe I'm just being hard on myself or, you know, whatever, but that's what I feel. Um, and when I give you guys advice and stuff like that, it comes from a place of experience. It comes from a place of love. It comes from a place of compassion, empathy, sympathy, compassion. Um, I have had a, a very rough, tumultuous life. Um, and I, for the most part, I've lived my life in darkness. And um, I think that's why I'm able to help people so easily um, because I have seen such horrors in my own life, right? And I've been through so much. So, and been through, you know, I've had a marriage that lasted for 12 years and I married again. And um, that has not been an easy road at all. That hasn't been. Um, so he's very different than anybody I've ever been with right? He is, um, he is very loving, unconditionally so. And he is not judgmental. Um, he, he provides a lot of things that I've never had before, right? Um, it's just a very different dynamic. Um, a lot of love, unconditional love, and it takes a lot to trust when you have someone in your life that loves you unconditionally and you've never had someone that loves you unconditionally, it's very difficult to trust that person. <laughs> it is, especially when you've been, I mean, imagine you're swimming in the beach with sharks your whole life, right? For 32 years, you've been swimming with sharks. And then all of a sudden, there's a dolphin out there. You're like, is it really a dolphin or is it a fucking shark? <laughs> That's my best analogy that I can give, give you. And that is 1000% true. Um, when I tell you I've been with some ruthless people, I have been with some very ruthless people. Um, and that's why it's kind of like been, wow, like, now I have someone who is not like that. Um, my first fiance actually tried to kill me. I told you, ruthless. Um, he tried to kill me. And the only way I got, the only reason why I got out of that situation is because I pretended to be dead. Yeah, that was what my intuition kicked in in that moment. I was like 17 at the time. And um, that was the first abusive relationship I was talking about when I met him when I was 16. And at 17, I went to, I was going to leave him. I was having a conversation with him about leaving him and he tried to smother me. 
and um, I faked dead. I just went limp, like I had died, and he got off of me. And then I jumped up and ran out of the house and got in my car and called my friend, who was like 300 pounds. <laughs> he was a good friend of mine, still a friend of mine, actually. Um, and he came over quick, as quickly as he could, and um, was there for me, right? And uh, that was my first encounter with someone who my best synopsis of this person is, you know, when people say someone is psychopathic or sociopathic, I would definitely say he was that. Um, he wasn't narcissistic. He didn't like to show off. He was very quiet. Um, he was very meek, mild, uh, very well-dressed. He was in the military, um, very good financially. Not, did not have a drug addict. He, he did have a drug. He didn't have a drug problem. He drank, but it was not. He was not an alcoholic. Um, he was perfect on paper, right? On paper, and my whole family liked him. Um, he didn't start showing his true colors until we moved in together. Um, well, I take that back. He did kind of be weird. He was kind of weird when we were dating. And I'm only telling you this so that other people can know the warning signs of someone who is just not quite right, right? I feel like maybe if I would have been a little bit more wiser back then, I would have been able to see the warning signs with him. But I didn't. Maybe I wouldn't. I don't know. But he was very romantic. He, like I said, was very well dressed. Um, he was very bossy and controlling, but he disguised it as, well, it's because I only want the best for you. I will never forget that saying as long as I live, because that was what he said to me all the time. He said, I always want the best. For, I only want the best for you. I'm not trying to control you. I just want the best for you. When I was 16, he was 19. So he wasn't that much older. Okay. But I used to try to sneak around and smoke cigarettes, and he always he wouldn't let me. Uh, he wouldn't let me drink. He, if I had a shirt on like this, he would button it all the way to the top. Um, it, he didn't like me going out with my friends, uh, like to places where they would be partying because he said they were about influence. Um, he wouldn't tell me not to go, but he would say, well, that's not really a good influence on you. Don't you agree? He was very manipulative. <laughs> um, and he was goofy acting. Like, he laughed about everything. And he was very funny, right? And, like I said, romantic. He bought me a rose every month that we dated. The end of the month, like, when it became a one-month anniversary, he would buy me a rose. Um, when I was working, when I was younger, I worked at an Italian restaurant that my, they knew my family, the owners, and um, I worked in their restaurant until I left home, and he would come get me after every day, and he lived a half an hour away from me, and he would come get me every night just to drive me four blocks, and then he would go home. Nobody ever said, don't you think that's weird or anything? Looking back, all of these things were kind of very odd, okay? Now, when we moved in together, he started complaining about my weight. Why? I don't know. I was 5'3", and I weighed 130 pounds. He started complaining about my weight, okay? Like... I don't feel like he honestly even thought I was fat. I think he just used that to diminish my self-worth to make me feel like I nobody would want me so that I wouldn't leave him because deep down inside, he was deathly afraid of me leaving him. That's the one thing he feared. Um, so he bought a lot of diet food and stuff like that and would constantly say stuff um, about my weight and just diminish me in any way that he could. 
Um, also, every Sunday, it was understood that I was to clean the whole house, and he would then inspect it. Now, granted, we lived in a one-bedroom apartment. I did not have any children with him. Thank God I knew better than that after he started showing his true colors. Um, and I would clean the whole apartment, which was about 900 square foot, if that. And I remember him every time checking behind me and then criticizing me. Oh, you're so stupid. How can you be so dumb? And I knew it was wrong, but I never said anything because I internalized that and I thought, you know what, maybe he just had a very bad childhood and this is how his father treated him or his mother. And I just went with it because I was young and dumb. I don't want to say dumb, but I was, I was young and clueless. And... And then he started, you know, I wasn't allowed to have a dog. I wasn't allowed, personally, I feel like I wasn't, he told me it was because I was too irresponsible. But I think I, now knowing what I know now, I feel like he didn't want me to have a dog because it would be something that distracted me from him. Because whenever he was home, we were together. It didn't matter. We were together. 24-7, I was not allowed to leave his site. We did everything together. Um... It didn't matter what it was. That's just how my life went. Um, so, and I'm going to kind of wrap this up. I'm going to pull two cards, one for the Divine Masculine, one for the Divine Feminine. But I'm going to wrap this up. I obviously was intuitively guided to tell you this story. And you guys know I've had a lot of toxic relationships. But for whatever reason, my intuition wanted me to tell you about him. I will never forget the day when his mask slipped. I don't know what came over me that day. We were both sitting on the couch and we were watching TV. And I remember looking at him and he, and when I tell you he was goofy, I mean, I'm telling you this kid was a thousand percent goofy. Okay. Oh, and keep in mind, he never hit me, by the way. I want to, I want to make that clear because a lot of women think, well, he doesn't hit me. He just talks verbally. He would never be violent. No, he tried to murder me when, when I left him, okay? So don't let that fool you. Uh, anyways, we, was, we were sitting on the couch, and when I say goofy, I mean, he would laugh about everything. My aunt was like, why are you attracted to him? I mean, he's attractive, yes, but he's a goofball. Like, but he was intelligent, um, and, you know, I knew he was intelligent because we would have other conversations, but he would always still have that, like, goofy undertone about him. I don't know what it was. So one day, something just wanted my intuition, maybe, because, you know, my higher power was like, maybe it's time for you to see who he really is. I don't know why it was that day, but I was sitting on the couch with him, and I looked and he started looking at me and laughing and this goofy little thing that he did. And I said, can I ask you something? And he goes, yeah. And I said, why do you always laugh about everything? I mean, and I was like, you laugh about everything. Like everything is funny. I said, why do you always laugh? And I swear to God, it was like somebody told him that they killed his mother or something. The amount of, or you would have thought that I freaking wiped his whole bank account out. I don't know, something that would cause a rage. Because when I tell you, his whole demeanor, it was the freakiest shit I've ever seen in my life. Like his whole face just went. I mean, I can't even do it. It was just, it was chilling. And he looked at me with that face and the whole smile, everything, the humor was just gone. And he looked at me and he said, because I do. And turned away. And that's when I realized that, something was completely wrong with him 
that there was something deeply and profoundly not right that I was just not able to see. Like, I feel like if I talk to him now, like if he came to my city, because I don't think he lives here. If he came to my city and I saw him face to face, I would be able to see that darkness now. But back then, for whatever reason, maybe I was too young, maybe I was just smitten because he was very attractive. He used to model, um, he was Colombian. He was American Colombian, but his, his family was immigrants. I mean, he was, my God, he was beautiful, okay? In terms of looks, he was gorgeous human being, okay? And I, I probably was just smitten with him and um, I just couldn't see it. I couldn't see the dysfunction in him. And um, that's the scary. That was, I think he was the most scariest person I had ever been with because of the simple fact that I did not see him coming. And I still think about him to this day because he could have killed me and I would have never pegged him to be a killer, ever. I would have never pegged him for that. Um, his family, I met his family. They were very loving individuals. His father, I did get weird vibes off of because <sighs> something that is weird to me, um, they were a nice middle class family and they were all from Bogota and um, I met his whole family, okay? And I won't tell you where they live because I don't want anyone that lives there to be like, I don't know what you're talking about. No. Um, but he comes, he's from a small town, okay? And being Colombian immigrants, <laughs> you would know who I'm talking about. I mean, this whole town has one freaking nail shop. No. Anyways, um, and his family was nice, except his father pegged me as weird because every single thing that we did, his father wanted to video record. And that felt very intrusive. And I know that it was my intuition why I felt so uneasy about him doing that is because I knew something was wrong with that. I knew something was off with that. Um, but I didn't say anything. I never even asked him about it because I was so young. I wasn't prepared to deal with, to emotionally be there for that type of conversation because he loved his parents to death and he had a good relationship with his parents and they acted like everything was perfect. But there was just something about his father and that video camera that really, it made me feel uncomfortable. And I never said anything, but if he was definitely, you know, and what's weird is that he was very violent and had all these issues. And then his sister was in an abusive relationship with a man who beat the hell out of her and did exactly what her brother, apart from the violence, her brother never beat me, but her husband did exactly what her, what her brother was doing to me except he did hit her. Um, so it seemed very, something was definitely off with that whole family. Cause I was like, you know, there's no way that you can come from a, a functional, loving, healthy family and then end up with two children who have emotional problems. I mean, you may, if there's mental illness, but it just seemed like he had become like a psychopathic person and his sister had become an empathic person, right? We all know that abusive families create those dynamics and it just seemed like something was being hidden. Um, so just be mindful of who you're dating. This was a long video. Just be mindful of who you're dating um, and be mindful of your own actions and um, Maybe someone's in a relationship that's similar to that or whatever, or maybe you're just not sure about warning signs, but if someone starts to like try to control you and all that type of stuff, that's not, 
steer clear, okay? Go run the opposite direction because it's definitely not a healthy person. And um, you may not get out. If, if my intuition did not tell me to fake dead, I probably would have died. He probably would have strangled me to death. He would have strangled me to death. So... So now I'm going to pull a card for Divine Feminine Energy. What we need to focus on healing now, right? What is our focus now? Recognition. I know you. We are twin flames. We belong together. Okay. Just because you recognize your person and or remember things with them from other lifetimes doesn't mean they do or that they even agree. Let it be. Let processes unfold and cycles conclude. Know what you know, stand that power, even if you feel like you're standing alone. Right now, you aren't even if it feels that way. Use the gift of this energy for your own healing, soul growth, expansion, and ascension. Do not force energy. Okay, so that's for divine feminine energy, okay? So I feel like it's kind of like, you know, and you're you're saying we belong together. It's kind of like, yeah, okay, well, stand in your knowing, but don't let it affect your journey, right? Don't let it affect how you live your life. Don't let it affect anything in your life, right? Just keep moving forward. That's what I feel like that card is for the divine feminine. Like, you know what you know, right? Which also leads me to say that I did a past life reading <laughs> about me and my twin, and I can tell you now it's very wild and crazy, but I am actually living my past life karma right now. Um, and it's the most hardest thing I've ever done, trying to make the right decision, because history likes to repeat itself. Um, so you got to be mindful and careful of that. Oh, all right. Divine Masculine. Card for Divine Masculine. Look at Mama's boy. He's so cute. Oof. I, victim. I was taught how to be a victim. It is a comfortable pattern. A tale of woe. There is no power whatsoever in victim mode. None. This is a misguided perception of power and a deeply ingrained reflex. Yes, reflex. Pay attention and learn to catch yourself when you default to that learned pattern. Who taught you that? Self-examine, because if we don't, we may never discover the lump. Reflect upon this, then do something in a whole new way. Now, the other one for Divine Masculine is running away. I felt confused and overwhelmed by emotions, mine and yours, so I ran. Running away is a child's game. Realize you are only, reali realize you are only running away from yourself. Even if you close and cover your own eyes, you aren't invisible. Other people can still see you there. Gather your courage and face whatever fears you have straight in the face. Conquer yourself. This opens the pathway to the divine feminine and the union. So, yeah. <laughs> and arrogance is on the bottom. <laughs> and open to receive is on the bottom for divine feminine. So, feminine needs to be open to receiving... Which, I feel like as feminines, we sometimes get into a place that is pretty guarded. We may not be really open <coughs> to certain things because we're just kind of tired, right? Like, we're like, we're done with this shit. But remember to try to be open and remain open, okay? And, <sighs> okay. So that concludes my video. I hope you guys enjoyed the video today. Um... I will pull cards for the situation tomorrow, and it'll be back to hands, <laughs> hands video. But um, like I said, you guys hadn't seen me in a while, and so I kind of wanted to touch base. I did have an hour session the other day, or yesterday, I believe it was, and she's like, oh, I'm glad I can finally put a face to your hands. So I wanted to kind of reach out and say hi to everyone and share where I'm at in my healing. And for whatever reason, Spirit wanted me to share that story. 
Um, so I, I surely hope no one is in a dangerous situation. And if you are, then look for the warning signs. Don't make excuses for people. I have a very bad habit of doing that, making excuses when the red flag is like a fire in the background. And I'm like, oh, we can put that out together. No, you can't. <laughs> so you're supposed to run and let the fire department handle it, right? So don't try to be the hero, right? You can't save them all. You can't, you're not meant to. That's a trap. So, all right. I hope everyone has a good day.